Good evening. You're watching the news on Croatian television. The Interior Ministry reported today about a major crackdown on a forced labor, human trafficking and digital fraud operation. Police suspect two Croatian nationals of holding 59 foreigners captive and forcing them to commit digital fraud at illegal call centers in Zagreb. The call centers were also located in Maribor and Ljubljana. The sweep took place Friday. Slovenian and Chinese police are involved in the investigation. At these call centers, the victims' freedom of movement was restricted. They were not allowed to communicate freely. Their identity documents were confiscated and they were coerced into committing digital fraud. The victims of the fraud were Chinese nationals. The victims were compelled with promises of making quick and easy money. They were told the work was legal and that this was how they could repay their debts. In some cases, the victims or members of their families were threatened. Ines management has announced it plans to shut down a unit at its refinery in Sisak and move crude oil processing to Ines' other refinery in Rijeka. This means that around 40 workers in Sisak will lose their jobs. Unions are demanding an emergency meeting with management. The most political party believes the closure of the unit signals that Ina plans to shut down the entire Sisak refinery, which is a major employer in the town. It's clear to everyone that this is a hostile takeover of Ina by Mol. Unfortunately, this government, like its predecessors, is too slow to act and has failed to hold Mol accountable for breaking its contractual obligations. This is the problem, and I think Mol is going to achieve its aims. We're fighting for CSAC and doing everything we can, although this is not directly within my powers. We're going to keep fighting to keep the refinery from shutting down. This would be a catastrophe for CSAC, given that the local steel plant has also been shuttered. People would lose their jobs. We're talking about hundreds of families and thousands of people. Environment and Energy Minister Tomislav Choric said tonight this was not going to be the beginning of the end for the refinery and offered assurances to workers, saying that the 40 workers who may be laid off would either be transferred to other jobs or paid severance packages. President Kolinda Grabar Kitarovic took part in events in downtown Zagreb today marking National Cervical Cancer Day. In Croatia, it's known as Mimosa Day after the bright yellow flower. Each year, more than 300 women in Croatia are diagnosed with cervical cancer and more than 100 die from the disease. Doctors say this doesn't have to happen. There is a vaccine that prevents the cause of cervical cancer, the HPV virus, and it is free for all eighth graders in Croatia, both girls and boys. Both women and men must be informed about how to protect themselves from infection by the human papillomavirus. They can get vaccinated and it's free for eighth grade students. And of course, women should see their gynecologist regularly. Zadar marked today the 25th anniversary of Operation Maslenica in the town's historic forum. The Croatian flag was lowered from the tower of the cathedral at noon. The public was treated to an air show by the Storm Wings, the Air Force's acrobatic display team. Visitor visitors could also view a display of military equipment and weapons along the waterfront. The people of Zadar are very much aware of the impact Operation Maslenica had on their lives. This operation reconnected Croatia's north and south. Members of the Young Social Democrats have launched a campaign that aims to help improve the lives of young people in Croatia. Over the past year, Croatia lost around 60,000 young workers to emigration. The SDP believes Croatian society is suffering from depression. The young people are leaving because they can't find jobs and have lost confidence in institutions. Meanwhile, SDP leader Davor Bernadic warned that the freedom of speech was being stifled in Croatia. It is our job to warn everyone that we must fight all forms of censorship in Croatia, every instance of blurred reality and fake news. It is getting tougher and tougher for Croatians to make ends meet. Food prices have gone up, electricity is more expensive, gas costs more, and nobody is talking about it. 
Culture Minister Nina Obuljen Korzinek talked about the freedom of the press in an interview on Croatian radio. She specifically addressed HRT, assessing that the situation there wasn't bad and that the government had no intention of interfering with the public broadcaster's independence. She did say the government was planning to overhaul media regulations. I think it's very important for HRT to have stable management and that it has a period during which necessary restructuring can be undertaken. I have to point out that HRT's legal framework and mission, which a segment of the public views very critically right now, was adopted in 2012 under the SDP-led government without public comment. Our plan is to amend the law on digital media in 2018 and the media law in 2019. We're also planning changes to the laws on HRT and HINA, but these will require less intervention, in my opinion, than the other two laws. Grape farmers and winemakers will be marking the beginning of the vine growing season on St. Vincent's Day this Monday. But some vintners in Maria Bistrica celebrated this weekend. The vines were pruned, decorated and blessed to ensure good yields in the autumn. When the shoots appear in about two weeks, behind every leaf there's a bud break. According to traditional beliefs, and I can tell you it's true 90% of the time, if the buds look good, it will be a good year. Hopefully there won't be any hail, God forbid, that destroys everything. In sports, Stipe Miocic, the Croatian-American mixed martial artist, will attempt to defend his UFC heavyweight title for the third time, a feat that no one has managed thus far. The fight takes place tonight in Boston. Miocic faces Francis the Predator Nganao. The Frenchman had eight kilos over Miocic at weigh-in, but the champion says he plans to hang on to his title. <laughs> Sunday's forecast calls for mostly cloudy skies in the morning. There will be rain and thunder showers on the coast and rain mixing with snow in the interior. However, precipitation will cease by the afternoon and skies will clear in the west. There will be a high to gale force southwesterly and southeasterly wind on the Adriatic. They will shift to a high northeasterly along the shore and north-northwesterly winds further out to sea. Morning lows will range from minus 2 to plus 2 inland and from 5 to 10 on the coast. The day's highs will be between 3 and 8 in the interior and between 9 and 13 on the Adriatic. In the new week, expect mostly dry conditions with only some light precipitation overnight Monday into Tuesday. Temperatures will be near average for this time of year. Windy conditions are forecast for the coast on Monday, especially in Dalmatia, but gusts will fall after that. The first part of the week looks mostly sunny and dry. And that brings us to the end of our program. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again tomorrow.